Hey guys, Andrew McFarlane here from StarterJuicePark.com. Hope you're amazing, happy, healthy, thriving. Today we are talking about drink bottle sizes. What should your drink sizes be? Now that's a big question and might have a complicated answer, but I'm gonna walk you through some of the considerations so you guys can make the decision that works best for you. So before I do that, if you guys are new to the channel, and you don't know who I am, you don't know what we do. I personally have been in this juice bar business for over a decade, running my own juice bar companies, as well as helping hundreds of people all over the world launch successful juice bar businesses with our agency. And so diving into this conversation today, um, I was inspired to make this video because of one of our clients. Uh, shout out to Sabrina at Preston Co. in Canada. And what she was noticing is that a lot of people in her environment, other businesses, started reducing their juice bottle size. Whereas at one point, the standard may have been around 16 ounces. Now we're seeing a lot of people sell juice at 12 ounce uh, sizes. And now depending on where you are in the world, you might be in Europe and you might use milliliters and uh, know that I'm really gonna give you the principles and things to think about and the sizes may differ based on your location and your business. But she was asking me the question, should I reduce my drink size? And that's a tricky thing to consider because it's really going to come down to the psychology of your customers. Every customer base is different. And I want to give you another example before we dive into this in a bit more detail. Uh, a client that we just took on recently was thinking about uh, a smoothie concept and he was saying, maybe I want to have my smoothies uh, be around 24 ounces. Now, generally, for a high quality smoothie, that's on the larger end of the spectrum. Now, some people are familiar with your tropical smoothie businesses or your Smoothie Kings or maybe your Jamba Juices, and they might even find that in those environments, people are drinking smoothies that are 32 ounces, right? But you have to cross correlate this with your desired price point and quality as well. Because if you want to have a really, really high quality drinks, meaning that the ingredients that are going inside of your smoothie are some of the best in the world, that's gonna cost you some money as a business owner. And then the question is, how do you have 24 ounces of that without charging the customer $15 per drink? Right now, today's present time, day and age, that would be considered on the higher end of the spectrum. Now, I know in some cities, if you're in New York or you're in LA, things are moving in that direction, but it'd still be considered to be a lot for a smoothie. So if you want to have a certain price point for your drink, you have to kind of work your way backwards to say, okay, based on what my costs are gonna be, how do I make sure I have the right margin and give the customers the quality that they desire? Because if you do have a customer base that is used to the Smoothie Kings, tropical smoothies, the really, really, really large smoothies, but they're also used to investing low dollar amounts for those products, in order for you to be competitive, you have to think about how your recipes are gonna be set up, if that's what your customers want. But there's not a huge difference between doing a 24 ounce drink and a 20 ounce drink. Obviously it is, it is uh, you know, four ounces different, but, if it seems more accessible for the customer on a price point and you can maintain the desired quality of your product, then you wanna think about that. Generally, in the US, what we've seen is that 16 ounces is sort of the average size for juices and smoothies. Now, going back to that 12 ounce conversation, why is this happening? Why is there a trend of people moving towards shrinking the size of the juice? Well, primarily it's because juice bar businesses and juice bar owners can increase the profit per ounce, right? And they can drop the price point for the customer. So the customer feels like, wow, this is more accessible. Now, even though the customer might be getting less value per ounce, they still feel like there's an entry. I know if you guys go to some grocery stores, you may have seen this. Um, in America, there's a lot of places and in other countries where when you go to purchase something, it could be a bag of almonds and they might have two sizes that are there. If you go to Whole Foods, I'm pretty sure Whole Foods does this. You will see the cost per ounce 
right? The cost per weighted ounce or the cost per liquid ounce. And they'll tell you, usually when you get things that are bigger, you get more value as a consumer than if you get things that are smaller. The cost for you goes up and the profit for that business goes up. And so this is the reason people are doing this. And as a juice bar business, I can't tell you what's right or wrong, but you have to take in all of the factors to consider everything and say, okay, what do we want our profit to be? What price point do our customers need? What sizes do they desire? Because in every environment, it's going to be different. For me, if I purchase a juice, I don't really want a 12 ounce juice. I'd prefer more of a 16 ounce juice. Would I buy a 12 ounce juice? Of course I would if that was my only option, right? But I prefer something more in the range of 16 ounces. Same thing when it goes for a smoothie. I prefer something in the range of 16 ounces to 20 ounces. And so for you as a business, you might decide that, hey, we're gonna have 16 ounce smoothies and we're gonna have 12 ounce juices or we're gonna have 20 ounce smoothies and 12 ounce juices. There's no right or wrong answer. It's really a matter of preference and you might try it on, see how it goes. The last thing that I wanna talk about is, as it relates to this, should you have multiple sizes? That's the next question that comes up. And my general advice is no, because it'll make things a lot easier on you. And usually you can adapt this. If customers come in and you keep hearing over and I wish you had larger sizes, then you can create larger sizes. Usually I haven't seen that be an issue, but it's gonna depend on your model. But don't get crazy. I've seen some people come in and they have small, medium, and large of this and small, medium. Now we know we've seen a lot of businesses who have this model and they're successful. But we've also seen a lot of businesses who have the one size drink and they're also successful. So it's not to say that one is perfect. And a lot of times as business owners, you're thinking about that. What's the perfect thing to do? And there is no perfect answer. There's just different options and ways you can approach it. The reason I recommend you start with one singular size is because it will make everything more streamlined. Instead of having to deal with two or three different sizes of bottles and cups, instead of having to train your staff on three different kinds of recipes for every single drink, right? Instead of having your customers have to think there and sit and say, oh, do I want a small, I want a large, I want a medium, right? That takes time, that takes energy and effort. Maybe you go with two sizes of anything, but I think three sizes is excessive from, from my personal experience as an operator and owner and what we recommend to our clients, streamline things. The more streamlined, the more efficient, the more effective, the more uh, leverage you get in your economy of scale in everything from your training to your ordering and so on. So I hope this helps give you guys some clarity. Um, if you guys enjoy the content, press the like button. If you have any questions or comments, Love to hear from you guys. Put in the comment box below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I invite you to subscribe. You can push the notification bell next to the subscribe button if you want to get notified. And follow us on Instagram and check out our podcast if you want to have more passive listening when you're going to work or maybe you're on a run, you want to get inspired. It's on Spotify. It's on iTunes. And if you guys need connections, actually, depending on where you are in your process, if you want us to support you, we've got connections to bottle vendors as well um, that can save you a lot of money. You can reach out to me personally at andrew at starterjuicebar.com. We'd be happy to talk to you about that and developing any other part of your business. If you need support, we can discuss that as well. Wishing you guys a lot of success. Hope you're healthy. Hope you're happy. And I'll see you guys at the next video. Take care. I hope you guys have been enjoying all of the content. If you're in a place where you are really inspired to start your juice business, but you're not exactly sure what the next steps are, for you, we've created a free ebook, The 15 Steps to Starting Your Juice Business from Scratch. This is gonna give you an overview of everything that you need to do from just having a concept all the way to launching your business. Beyond that, if you're inspired to go even deeper, we've created an online course, the Juice Bar Master Blueprint that is going to go into great detail into every single area of launching a successful juice business. There's links for both of these in the description below. I know you'll find a lot of value out of them. As always, wishing you guys a lot of success and I'll see you at the next video.